Hi right, guys, so we're back in part two. We are now assembling the engine block. So we've now got the crank dropped in. We've got the main studs fitted and greased with ARP lube. The, you can't actually buy the main bolts from Ford. They're just unavailable. You have to buy it as a short block. So we've got the main studs from OC Motorsport. We've got them fitted, ready to bolt down the girdle. We've got, like we said in the previous video, we've had all the crank journals ground to our specs so we can run a thicker oil an oil that we spec based on the crank clearances. We've checked and measured them again since it's come back from the machine shop. We're happy with that and now it's time to final assembly. So Ash is just gonna get the girdle on next and then we'll get rods and pistons in. You can also see everything is caked in assembly lubricant because we don't want this ring running dry. You know, you're gonna be cranking this thing a little bit and you definitely don't want it dry on the uh, on first crank up. Crank's all bolted down now. Smooth as butter. So rods and pistons are now assembled. We've got two of them already in. We've got two here. Fully assembled, rings are now on the pistons. We've got the gudgeon pins in, we've got the clips in. The rings are in the correct rotation. Um, we are in the process of bolting them down. We've got to use a torque wrench on these because of the girdle design. So we would normally use a stretch gauge because it's far more accurate way um, of tightening fasteners down. But unfortunately, due to the girdle on these, you can't actually fit it down. So that's a stretch gauge and it measures the stretch of the bolt as you're tightening it. It's a far more accurate way of measuring, um, tightening down any fastener. But unfortunately we can't do it on this, so we just got to have to torque them down instead. So we've now got the cylinder head on, we've got the head gasket on, we've got the ARP head studs all fitted and torqued down. We have got some of the ancillaries on, brand new oil pump, brand new water pump. Um, we did have to stop there for a bit because somebody forgot to order a bottom gasket set. So that's hopefully here today. Um, we can carry on. Um, we're just waiting on a load of the followers to turn up for the cams as well. Um, so we can shim them correctly and get the clearances right. This turned up yesterday, our custom extreme clutch for this build. We've gone for all the extreme clutches for the solid flywheels on the market at the minute are unsprung plates. Everyone complains about gearbox problems with these unsprung systems because essentially what happens is the, the springs in the clutch plate absorb some of the shock load. So when you remove the dual mass flywheel and you remove the springs in the clutch plate, all of the shock from gear changes goes through your transmission. And that's when people are getting big issues with like input shafts, um, snapping and all sorts. So we spoke to the guys at Extreme and they did us a one-off clutch and we're, I've not even taken it out of the box yet. So we'll, we'll see what's in here. Sweet. So we've got it all out, we've got it all out of the box, we've got all the three bits in the original kit. So this is the off-the-shelf Fiesta kit that you can buy. We've got the extreme clutch cover with the much stronger springs in it, more massively increased clamping pressures and it looks wicked in purple. You've then got your lightweight flywheel which we, I'll dig out a stock dual mass flywheel for a Fiesta um, when we're done with this and we'll put them both on the scales and we'll see how, many, how much difference there actually is between that and a stock dual mass. And then this is the standard clutch plate, which is just a bit of steel with some pads riveted to it. Um, now, like I was saying a second ago, this is just sending all your shock for your transmission. There is no absorbent in the dual mass and there's no absorbent in the clutch plate so hence why a lot of people get problems hopefully we don't with this new clutch plate that the guys at extreme have made up so there is our sprung clutch plate with the springs 
So that should absorb some of the shock and hopefully save our transmission. Right, so we've got a ST180 stock dual mass. We've put it on our parcel scales and we're gonna see how much difference it is to the new extreme clutch. So stock dual mass, ST180, 11.2 kg. Stock clutch plate, takes it to 12. Stock clutch cover, takes it up to 15.9 kg. So. So 7.9 kg, just the flywheel. Add our clutch plate, takes it up to nine and a half. And add our clutch cover, takes it up to 13.7. So the bottom gasket set's finally turned up. We've now got the um, baffle all fitted, windows tray all fitted, rear main. And we are just gonna silicon it all up, drop the sump on. We've just got the studs there, just to help us align the sump because there's no dowels or anything and we don't wanna squish the silicon as we are dropping it on. So the next step is to get the cams bolted down. The followers dropped in for these. Now it's important to check the clearance between the cam and the follower. We've already done this and measured it. These are the brand new ones from Ford um, that we've got in. We know these are the right sizes now. Um, here's the eleven stop ones. So all of these come in different sizes, and you need to make sure that you are within the specs of what your cam manufacturer says, so pipe the cams for us. Um, we'll show you how to measure it just in a sec. So this is the clearance that we're checking, the clearance between the camshaft and the follower there. And you should just be able to slide a feel of gauge in with a little bit of resistance. And that is bang on. So Ash has done his maths correctly on this occasion. We touched on the keyway and the crank in the first video. And Ash is just gonna fit that now. So we'll show you the keyway being installed and touch a little bit more on why we're doing it. So all the EcoBoost engines run a similar, um, similar setup. Where there's no keyway but the 2 litre and the 2.3 EcoBoost both use diamond coated friction washers. The 1.6 EcoBoost doesn't have anything. So the only thing that holds your crank pulley on and your engine in time is this big bolt. Now when we're revving this quite high and we want to obviously make as much torque and as much power as possible there's a lot a lot more strain on that bolt and if that slips then that's game over so here's the keyway the key is fitted and now that slides on we've got some green loctite on there just so it doesn't move and there she is so there's no chance of that slipping anymore because we've got that key in there but end of the day now we've got a fair bit more wrapped up We've got it all timed up. We've got the belts on the side. We've got the alternator on. AC compressors back on, because we're keeping that. We're not getting rid of that. It's not that race car. We've also done the MEF. So we've gone for an AEM MEF kit and we're gonna do it four port. We put one MEF nozzle for each cylinder. We've had to just grind down the manifold a little bit. And we've managed to get them pretty central because the it splits into two at the bottom. So we managed to get it pretty central between the two, so hopefully all four cylinders get a nice, nice even distribution. We've not done any four port systems on an EcoBoost yet. We've done plenty on the single ports and they've seen a few horsepower, but we're interested to see how this gets on. We've got all the cam bridges and top covers about, bolted down with a fancy sealant, the anaerobic sealant, and we are 
not far off, ready to come off the stand. We'll probably get the turbo kit and the induction laid on just so we can get some nice pictures. Um, but yeah, other than that, we'll hopefully get it finished and off the stand tomorrow. So it's now tomorrow and we've got the exciting bit on now, the turbo. It's all bolted up. We've had the manifold ceramic coated. We've had the downpipe and screamer and that was on the turbo, all ceramic coated. We've got the Turbo Smart Hypergate 45 and the turbo in question, we've actually gone for a Chinese one. So this is a Pulsar G25 550 replica. We chose to do this because we've used a few in the past and they've had pretty good results. You know, you're like 80, 90% of the performance of a real Garrett. Longevity, we're not too sure on yet, but I guess we'll find out. We're hoping to actually go and take this to be checked on a VSR balancer later today, maybe tomorrow if we get a chance. So we'll see, we'll see really. We'll see if it's uh, up to Garrett specs, but hopefully it'll do the job, save us a few quid, and we will put a genuine Garrett on it eventually, but we'll just get it up and running on this one for now. And for those who know, T5100 housing for all the turbo noise. So the next issue we've got is for the wastegate to be water cooled. Um, we've got to have water in, water out, and a vacuum. And it's really tight on the block, so we've had to disassemble the wastegate so we can spin it around and get, get them where we need them to be. So we've got the full turbo kit on now. We've got the oil feed done. We've got the oil return done for the turbo. We've worked out how we're going to do the coolant feed and return for the wastegate now. We're just waiting on a couple of little T pieces to turn up, hopefully today. And yeah, we've just put it all on, just some pictures. And it looks pretty awesome. So we've got the massive three inch part work over the top, four meth nozzles, and then obviously tubular manifold, turbo, all fit in perfectly. But now we're going to have to just cobble something together for the uh, for the bottom boost pipe. Um, but when we release this kit, we are going to supply it with a full um, hot side boost pipe. It's just going to be easier. It's going to be the best bet. So we'll get a nice um, pipe made up after. We'll get this up and running for now, and then we'll get a nice pipe made up to include in the kits. Next up on the list is the injectors. So these are the larger I think they're 30% over injectors they come from um, they come from a drag so we're just gonna swap the old seals out for some nice new genuine Ford ones Our extreme clutch is now all bolted down and torqued down this morning. We are just going to chuck the gearbox back on and get it back in the car. We've got the downpipe and screamer off just to make it a bit easier to get in. And we're going to end part two of this series here. Please subscribe to the channel for part three. We will be showing fitting the engine, getting it running, tuning, and see what power she makes. Um, Drop us a comment, ask any questions with what we've done, or if you'd like us to go and go into anything in more detail, or anything you'd like us to um, include in part three, just let us know and we'll do our best.